Hello guys, in this video I am explaining the concept inter-process communication which is very important in operating system. Right? So before starting with the inter-process communication, if you have any doubts regarding the process and its states, you can refer my previous video where the link is given in the description below. Right guys? So let me start with the inter-process communication. So before understanding what is the inter-process communication, we need to understand what are the different types of processes. In processes, there are two types, independent process and a cooperating process. What is the independent process? Independent process, in simple words, that process does not going to affect the other processes. That means it is not going to establish the communication with other processes it is going to execute right independently other processes are not going to depend on this process or this process is not going to depend on other processes but what is a cooperative process cooperative process means that can affect other processes and it also can be affected by other processes it can affect other processes and also it can be affected by other processes that means cooperating processes should establish the communication with the other processes to do the tasks understood guys independent process it can execute solely that is independently uh, without establishing communication with the other processes but cooperating process it is not a case they have to establish the communication with the other processes they have to affect the other processes to execute the tasks right so why cooperation is allowed? Why we need this cooperation? Why we need this cooperation between the processors? Because of these reasons. The first reason is information sharing. Right? There may be several processors which need to access the same file. So the information must be accessible at, all, at the same time to all users. Suppose if the same information is needed by two or more processors, right? then the cooperation is necessary that's why right next computation speed up right why why computation is going to be going to speed up if you use cooperation between the processes that means see here so if we broken down the problems into subtasks which are solved simultaneously right that means I'm going to divide my tasks into subtasks. I'm going to share my tasks between different different processors that may communicate with each other. At that time, definitely my task is to go. Uh, task is to be completed more quickly. That's why. Understood, guys? Next, modularity. A system can be divided into cooperating modules and executed by sending information among one another so what is module module is nothing but a, a pro system can be divided into modules that is going to do separate separate tasks where each module can communicate with the other modules right so if we allow cooperation obviously one module can communicate with the other module and they uh, and they can do their tasks right that is the thing next convenience what is the meaning of a convenience here? Even a single user can work on multiple tasks by information sharing. Single user can do more tasks at the same time, right? By sharing the information with the other processes. That is possible. So it is convenient for the user to work by sharing the information. So these are the reasons that allows the cooperation needs to be there between the processes. Right guys? Next, what is inter-process communication? Right, as the name says, cooperating processes require some type of communication between them. That means two processes should be able to communicate with each other. They need to be 
right they need to be in a position to exchange the information between them in inter process communication there are two types one is shared memory systems and another one is message passing system right now we will discuss each types in detail now what is a shared memory systems see here so here uh, you can see the diagram here first you can see here here two processes are there process A and process B and each processes they are using the common memory shared memory process A can use the process A can also use the same memory process B can also use the same memory understood guys so here two processes sharing the same memory right so now now a region of shared memory is created within the address space of a process which needs to communicate right when a process wants to communicate with other process it has to allocate its space address space to create the memory here we can assume that process a needs to communicate with the process b the process a is uh, right creating the shared memory where process a and process b can communicate with each other other processes that need to communicate uses this shared memory right guys here b can use that shared memory to communicate with the process a right understood so next the form of data and position of creating shared memory area is decided by the process that means process should decide right where to create the shared memory right there will be a lot of there will be a lot of space right so within that space where i have to create this those things are taken care by the process right next and one more important thing a few messages must be passed back and forth that means both the process they have to exchange some messages right in order to set up and coordinate the shared memory access right uh, suddenly they can't uh, start the communication right before that these processes should communicate with each other by passing the messages you to initial setup for doing the initial setup then they can share the memory next thing and one more uh, here see here the process should take care right it should take care that the two processes will not write the data to the shared memory at the same time that means either process a should write it or process b should write at a time at a time they can't uh, do it right process a should write or process b should write at the same time both process a and process b should not should ca should not share the memory it is not possible no right either process a should share it or process b should share it both can both cannot share the same memory at the same time right that is very important next to explain this shared memory concept I am taking an example of a producer consumer problem this is a, one of the famous problem in uh, operating system not only in operating system in several areas uh, this will come right as an example so I am taking this producer consumer example right to explain this shared memory concept so you see here it is very simple in which a producer consumer problem in a producer consumer problem in which one process is producing the data it is going to produce the data one process and another process is consuming the same data understood guys so producer means it is going to produce the data consumer means he is going to consume the data now between the producer and the consumer there will be a buffer intermediate buffer the buffer is present in between producer and the consumer right so the producer is going to put the data to the buffer and consumer takes the data from the buffer right guys producer is going to put the data to the buffer and consumer takes the data from the buffer right 
we will see this in detail while discussing the example right and one more thing a producer can produce one item while the consumer is consuming another item that is possible a producer can produce the item while consumer is busy in consuming the another item they can do it the producer and consumer must be synchronized this is very very important that means what is synchronization see here the consumer does not try to consume an item that has not been produced right so consumer can't uh, right consume the item that is not been produced right that is not that should not be the case they needs to be work in the synchrony right and one more important thing so see here when a producer is not produced what a customer should uh, consumer should do here the consumer should wait until the until the item is produced right the consumer should wait until the producer will produce the item understood guys it is very simple so here there will be two processes producer and a consumer there will be intermediate buffer between producer and consumer the producer puts the data to the buffer consumer takes out the data from the buffer the producer can produce one item and the same time the consumer can consume the another item they can do it and they should work in synchrony right if uh, producer is not produced the item consumer should wait until the producer is going to produce the item right next so i told you between a producer and a consumer there will be intermediate buffer what type of but buffer we are going to use we i can use there are uh, two types of buffers mainly i can use the unbounded buffer or a bounded buffer so what is the example i'm going to take now uh, the example going to use a bounded buffer right so here first we will understand what is the unbounded buffer and what is the bounded buffer here with the unbounded buffer there is no limit on the size of the buffer there is no limit on the size of the buffer and the data produced by the producer there is no limit right but the consumer may have to wait for new items right understood guys the buffer there is no limit on the size of the buffer and the producer can produce right data without any restrictions but the consumer may have to wait for the new items but what is unbounded buffer uh, sorry bounded buffer right as the buffer size is fixed the producer has to wait if the buffer is full and the consumer has to wait if the buffer is empty understood guys so in this example i am using a bounded buffer bounded buffer means as the buffer size is fixed the producer has to wait if the buffer is full and the consumer has to wait if the buffer is empty understood full means you can't produce empty means you can't consume that's why understood guys next example so here uh, i'm using a queue here circular queue uh, to explain this circular queue example i'm using here one thing you have to remember here there are two points uh, pointers are there here in pointer and out pointer i'm going to use remember one thing here while producing only in will change but while consuming only out will change this is very important right while consuming only out pointer will change while producing only in pointer will change understood so see here so this is a consumer producer consumer producer problem example first i will take the producer side then i will explain the consumer side so first of all before starting the problem what we need here buffer without buffer we can't uh, communicate right that's why the, our first thing is to create a buffer here you can see there uh, there is a code to create a buffer here my buffer size is 10 right so buffer size is 10 i'm creating a buffer with size 10 and also i'm initializing two pointers here in is equal to 0 and out is equal to 0 understood guys right i uh, created a i created a buffer and i'm going to set two pointers in and out 
to zero. This is the thing. Now my buffer is ready. My buffer size is ten. I can use this buffer. See. So now I am explaining about the producer here. So this is the code for the producer. So to produce an item, first you have to prepare your item, right? So see here, you can see the code there. Produce an item and store it in the next produced. So here, so this is the initial setup, and I'm going to assume that my my item will be x, and x will be stored in a variable called next produced. This is very important, understood, guys? My item x. I'm going to create an item x and store it in a variable called next produced. Right? This is the initial step. First, I have to create my item. I have to produce my item. I produced the item x, and I have to store that in a variable called which variable? Next produced. Understood, guys? So my item is produced in a, my item is saved in a variable called next produced. Next. So first, now next, what we have to check? We have to check whether the buffer is empty or not i already told you if the buffer is full i can't produce right that's why i have to check whether my buffer is empty or not see here so my initial pointers are what in is equal to 0 and out is equal to 0 i'm checking the uh, i'm checking whether my buffer is empty or not to produce that my buffer needs to be empty what is so what is the condition there while n i while while i n plus 1 i n means in 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 plus 1 modulus of buffer size is equal to out now i will check that see here what is the in value there 0 0 plus 1 modulus of 10 0 plus 1 can be 1 modulus of 10 right 1 module of 10 is equal to 1 so you know that 1 not equal to 0 obviously it is not equal to out out value is what here 0 so 1 is not equal to 0 that's why my buffer is not full that means my buffer is empty understood guys so initially I created the buffer I set the pointer to in is equal to 0 out is equal to 0 I produced the item x and I uh, stored that item in an next produced variable but after that uh, to put that uh, pro item produced in the buffer I have to check my buffer is empty or not to do that right I have taken this instruction that is 0 plus 1 modulus of 10 obviously uh, in will be equal to 1 now 1 is not equal to out that is 0 1 is not equal to 0 that's why my buffer is not full so obviously now I can produce uh, I can insert my item into the buffer see so for that the code is see here so buffer of in is equal to next produced in is equal to in plus 1 modulus of buffer size see here guys so now what is the in value here buffer of 0 is equal to next produce I told you my variable sorry my item x will be in the variable next produced so that's why x will be stored in which location that is buffer of 0 you can see there so x will be stored in the buffer of 0 so after storing the item x in the buffer first after storing the item x in the buffer I have to again increment the pointer in see here in is equal to in plus 1 you can see here 0 plus 1 modulus 10 1 module 10 will be in will be 1 so your in value is changed from 0 to 1 your in value is changed from 0 to 1 understood guys right so this is the first iteration I uh, inserted I produced the item X next we will see 
one more iteration so this is the second iteration here I am inserting a new item y here now you can see there my in value is one year my in value is one year see so next uh, my item y will be there in the variable next produced again I will check again we will check for the condition so in value is what now 1 1 plus 1 module of 10 that is 2 module 10 2 2 is not equal to 0 right because out value is 0 you are observing right in is incrementing here out is not incrementing here that is very important I, I told you in producer only in will change us in, in consumer only out will change understood guys out value will not change here only in value will get changed understood so 2 is not equal to 0 obviously that suggests that uh, my buffer is not full that is empty that's why right I can uh, continue with the next statement you can see here buffer of in is equal to next produce that is buffer of in is now 1 because it is empty right uh, buffer is empty I can uh, proceed buffer of 1 is equal to next produced so what is there in a next produced why why you told uh, I told that right uh, why is there in the next produced variable right next I am going to store that y in the location 1 understood guys any doubts you can if you have any doubts uh, you can post your doubts in the comment section right so understood so see here buffer of in is equal to next produced you know that next produced variable contains a y and it will be there and it will be stored into one one position first uh, one, not not first that is index one it is stored in the index one position you can see here buffer of one is equal to y understood guys understood now see here now what is the next statement there in is equal to in plus one percentage of buffer size that is modulus of buffer size now uh, we will do this so we will continue this process until the value of in becomes 9 right right we have to continue until the value becomes 9 the in value becomes 9 so when the in value becomes 9 you can see there it will be equal to out when the in value become 9 the right the value will be equal to out that is 0 it will 10 modulus 10 will be 0 and it will be equal to out that's why I can stop there that means what your buffer is full up to 9 your buffer will be capable of holding the values understood guys next consumer now we are going to understand about the consumer so see here here also the same buffer I am considering here in is equal to 0 out is equal to 0 right buffer is empty that means uh, that is very important consumer can't consume if the buffer is empty if in is equal to out buffer is empty you can see there in is 0 out is also 0 there, that is equal obviously when in is 0 out is 0 your buffer will be empty you can't consume anything right suppose if a buffer is uh, not empty if a buffer is not empty you can see here you can see here so buffer is not empty here uh, buffer is full here then you can consume then you can consume the data but the important thing you have to observe here is right the in is incremented when producing only in is incremented out will be in the initial position only so well uh, well starting consuming out will be in the initial position that is 0 only in will be equal to 9 so you can see there so my buffer is full now I will proceed with the next consume if is equal to buffer of out so buffer of out is what out is 0 buffer of 0 will be consumed that is x will be consumed here that is x will be going to be consumed here and one more important thing after consuming x 
you have to increment your out pointer out will be incremented from 0 to 1 that is out is equal to 1 modulus of 10 that is 1 now your out value is changed from 0 to 1 understood guys understood for consuming the buffer needs to be full right now you can see here so next consumed is equal to buffer of 1 this is the second iteration I am talking about first x is consumed now now as per the rule y has to be consumed so we will see that again we will check uh, whether in is equal to out now obviously it is not possible in is 9 out is 1 so obviously your buffer is not empty so now I will uh, continue with the next thing next consume is equal to buffer of 1 what is there in the buffer of 1 y is there in the buffer of 1 so you are going to consume y you are going to consume you are going to consume y right understood guys next what you will do again you will increment the out from 1 to 2 this process goes on repeating until the out value become 9 understood guys understood this process repeats until the out value becomes 9 now you can ask question what happens when out value becomes 9 when out value becomes 9 you can see there in is also same out is also same values of both these are same obviously while in is equal to out what is the condition here while in is equal to out buffer empty there is nothing in the buffer to consume understood guys right so that's why consume process will over understood let me brief right so here what we did so we created a buffer we set the pointer to in is equal to 0 out is equal to 0 we produced the item x and we uh, stored in the ne variable next produced then what we did we check whether our buffer is empty or uh, buffer is not full or what so we checked that so obviously uh, 1 is not equal to 0 right so obviously buffer is not full so what I did so I inserted the next produced uh, value to the buffer of 0 that is x is inserted into the buffer of 0 after that, after that I incremented the value of x to 1 that is sorry not x that is sorry that is uh, incremented I incremented the value of into 1 next so after that uh, I created a new item y and it uh, stored in the next produced variable so after that I stored the y into the buffer of 1 next I incremented the value of x to 2 understood guys this process reaches until it becomes in value becomes 9 so after that so I can't produce anymore because my buffer is full now on the consumer side so if a buffer is empty I can't consume anything that is in 0 out 0 I can't consume anything so when the buffer is full I can I can consume and what way I can consume means for buffer of 0 first I'll consume x because next consume is equal to buffer of x the buffer of uh, out that is out value is 0 here that's why I consumed the x understanding guys next after that I incremented the out value remember one thing in producer side in will get in values will incremented in consumer side out values will get incremented right once I reach us after that this is the second iteration where again I consumed the value y and again I incremented the out to 2 from 1 to 2 so this process reaches until uh, out is equal to 9 and in is equal to 9 thereby I can't consume anymore because uh, my buffer is empty so understood guys so next is a message passing systems right so far you, you have studied what is a shared memory here a message passing systems what is a message passing system this mechanism allow process communication without sharing the address space here you can uh, you, you need not to share anything here right there 
one process has to write it and one process has to read it but here it's not a case message passing system uses system calls to send a message and to receive a message and one more important thing to send and receive a message a communication link should be established between the two processes understood guys this is common there are lot of different techniques uh, in message passing systems but whatever the technique you use whatever the technique you use this mechanism is common that is you have to use send message receive message system call and that mean uh, between the two processes there should be a communication link you have to establish the communication link between the two processes in message passing there are three types direct and indirect communication synchronous or asynchronous communication automatic or explicit buffering let me see each technique in detail and one more important thing direct or indirect communication can also be called as naming so this is the diagram for message passing you can see there process a can uh, communicate with the process b by passing the messages process can uh, understanding guys so each process can communicate with the other processes by passing the messages so here they are not using any shared memory they are uh, communicating with each other by passing the messages so naming technique so this technique wants the processes to communicate right if a process wants to communicate right they have a way to refer each other that means if a process wants to communicate with the other process both the process should know their identity they have the they have to use some identity naming uh, identity means uh, for a human being name is identity right in the same way processes can also be identified by names you can use some naming techniques right now what is a direct uh, communication here in direct communication the sender and receiver must explicitly know each other name that means uh, before sending something i need to know a receiver name before receiving receiving something i need to know a sender name they has to know each other now what is the syntax for that system call so here a message is process p you can see there a process p can send a message in the same way process q can receive a message right understood guys now i told you that there should be a communication link between the two processes that are using message passing technique uh, i need a communication technique mainly right to send the messages here see here a link is established automatically between every pair of processes that wants to communicate so here in a direct communication in a direct communication the link is established between the two processes that want to communicate and one thing the processes need to know their identity and one more important thing a link is associated with exactly one pair of communicating processes here uh, only one pair means that means two processes should be there not more than that a link is associated only between exactly two processes understood now between two processes there will be only one link between two processes there will be only one link understood guys now for direct communication we use two types of addressing symmetric addressing and asymmetric addressing so here symmetric addressing means the above described communication is uh, what i discussed so far that means uh, both the sender and the receiver has to have a name for each other that is symmetric addressing sender should also have the name receiver should also have the name that is the example for symmetric addressing what is the symmetric addressing here only the sender name is mentioned but the receiving data can be from any system sender can receive the data from any system there is no rule for it, the, it has to receive from particular system no 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 sender can receive the data from any system 
so you can see there the system calls send a message to process p you are you are sending a message to process p but you can see there you are receiving a message you can receive a message from any process that's why i specified id there different different process can have a different different id so thereby i can receive a message from different processes i can receive a message from different processes but what is the disadvantage of direct communication what is the disadvantage any changes here the main disadvantage of direct communication is if you want to change the identification process obviously the whole system has to be changed here for example here for uh, identification we are using names right instead of names you are, if you are using any uh, other mechanism like uh, integers then it's a problem you have to change the whole system right you have to change the identifier in the whole system obviously this is a disadvantage now what is the indirect co communication so i told you uh, in a naming there are two types direct communication and indirect communication right this is the first te technique what i am discussing that is naming technique where there are two types direct communication and indirect communication so uh, direct communication uh, we discussed uh, there should be a naming technique in the direct communication only we discussed right symmetric addressing and asymmetric addressing symmetric addressing means both the sender and receiver should have the name but asymmetric addressing means receivers uh, should not have any names here uh, sender can receive the message from any receiver but whatever we discussed so far it is only for direct addressing what is indirect addressing So see here, in indirect addressing, in indirect addressing, a mailbox or a port is used to send and receive the messages. Now, what is a mailbox? Mailbox is an object into which messages can be sent and received. Right? Directly you are not communicating, right? You are indirectly communicating by the means of mailbox. You are sending the messages to the mailbox and you are receiving the messages from the mailbox. And one more important thing, each mailbox will have an ID. Based on that ID only you can send and receive the messages. And one more important thing, two processes can communicate only if they have a shared mailbox. Obviously, because uh, one processes has to share the shared mail mailbox needs to be shared because each process has to send and receive, right? That's why the mailbox should be shared here. You can see the uh, system calls here so send a message to the mailbox A uh, for example to send a message you are sending the message to mailbox for to receive a message you are receiving a message from a mailbox these are the two system calls send and receive next in uh, direct communication the communication links uh, have some properties in the same way in indirect communication is uh, in indirect communication also we have some properties so see here a link is established between a pair of processes only if they have a shared mailbox there also a same thing the link is established between a pair of processes only but here the extra thing is but they have their share, shared mailbox if they have that shared mailbox they can establish and a link may be associated with more than two processes here there is no no rule that only uh, only two processes should be there but in direct communication only two processes were there but here it's not a case more than two processes can be there right next between each pair of communicating process there will be any number of links but in direct communication there, there only one link was there but in, in this indirect communication there can be any number of links between the processes or a mailbox now one more important thing now you can ask question who can create a mailbox or who should own the mailbox a mailbox can be owned by operating system so operating system is responsible for creating a new mailbox sending and receiving a messages from the mailbox or delete the mailboxes so whatever the tasks that has to be taken care right whatever the tasks are there regarding the mailbox that has to be taken care by operating system 
so operating system is responsible for these things new mailbox creation receiving and sending the messages and deleting the mailboxes so so far we have discussed first type of message passing technique that is uh, direct and indirect so now another type of uh, technique in message passing system is synchronization so synchronization means what we will see this the send and receive messages can be implemented as either blocking and non blocking what is this you can send and receive messages right you can send a message or you can receive a message either in a blocking way or non blocking way what is blocking blocking can be also called as synchronous send what is blocking send here see here a sending process is blocked a sending process waits until the message is received by receiving process understood guys blocking send means here we have some synchronization right blocking send means sending process is blocked until the message is received by the receiving process but what is non blocking send here we are not going to wait no no waiting here it sends the message and continues with the task that is the non blocking send now what is blocking receive the receiving process is blocked until a message is available here you have to wait until the message is available the receiver has to wait until a message is available what is a non blocking send sorry what is a non blocking receives that is asynchronous receive understood guys receives the message without block what is a non blocking receive here it receives the message without block the received message may be valid message or a null it receives anyway it receives without any blocking it receives the message even if it is a null message also no problem it will receive the message this is the non blocking receive understood guys so here blocking send blocking receive non blocking send and a non blocking receive in this way also you can pass the messages between the processes and the last technique is buffering so what is buffering when a messages are passed right you know that when a messages are passed between a sender and a receiver a temporary queue is created it is a buffer that's why buffer is a temporary memory right right to send or receive a message so i can create a temporary buffer so this buffer can be of three capacities so q can be of three capacities zero capacity this is the here zero capacity means the buffer size is zero that means here i am not creating the buffer only buffer does not exist messages are not stored in the queue only the sender must block until receiver accept the messages it is the uh, sender doesn't use any intermediate buffer here no buffer is not there senders must block until the receiver accept the messages because there is no buffer but if you having a bounded capacity buffer bounded capacity buffer means what bounded capacity queue means what right you know that right so there in a message i am implementing the queue buffer in a queue format the queue is of fixed size bounded capacity means queue size is fixed here senders must block if the queue is full obviously right guys if the queue is full sender must block because the capacity is fixed right after sending the bytes the sender is blocked obviously the queue is of fixed size sender must block if the queue is full otherwise it can send it but after sending again the sender is blocked what is unbounded capacity here the queue is so is your queue is infinite infinite the queue is having infinite capacity infinite capacity means sender never blocks because the capacity is infinite right you can send sender can send without any restrictions so that's why sender never blocks now difference so far we have discussed uh, shared memory and a message passing techniques so what are the differences between shared memory and a message passing technique first see here there are four main differences a region of memory is shared by communicating processes into which the information is written and read 
you know that guys shared memory means what you are using the same memory where one processor can write and one processor can read uh, i discussed about the producer and consumer problem right one process can produce another process another process can consume so message passing first uh, another what is that message exchange is done among the processor by using objects in shared memory we are sharing and uh, in uh, and communicating but in message passing we are communicating with the messages as objects that is the first difference what is the second difference mainly shared memory is uh, suitable for sending the large data large block of data message passing is useful for only sending the small data so when you want to send the big data big block of data go for a shared memory when you want to send the small data go for a message passing and one more important thing system call is used only to create shared memory that means only once we use the system call to create a shared memory that's all after that we don't use any system calls only to create the shared memory we use system calls but in message passing system call is used during every read and write operation you are saying uh, you are seeing in message passing right sending the message receiving the message but in producer and consumer problem i created the buffer only once but here it's not a case i'm receiving i'm sending in a message passing next last difference message is sent faster as there is no system calls obviously shared memory doesn't have any system calls in between system calls that's why message is going to be sent faster but here in message passing we have some system calls send system receive system calls right that's why message is communicated slowly right guys understood any doubts if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the below comment section thank you for watching the video please don't forget to subscribe to my channel please click the bell icon to get the notifications and don't forget to like and share